right, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday to you. How are you all doing? Always good to be back. This is episode 12 featuring the one and only Blake Aaron. Incredible guitarist, incredible artist, you name it. And we're going to have a lot of fun with him in a little bit. But uh, we got some music to get to you first. We got some brand new music today. And I don't know if you noticed a little bit about the, the image you're seeing. We got some brand new cameras. We got a couple DSLRs uh, from Sony and really enjoying checking those out and getting the uh, workflow going. So I hope you're enjoying it out there. Drop in the comments. Let me know how it's looking, how it's sounding. And uh, we're going to get a push it right now. I got a tune for you from my new record, Escape. This is a little jam. It's called Sunday Swing. Just getting get you started off smooth.
on y'all. Put it right here. Come on. Help me out. We're going to take it out right here. My goodness, we're gonna keep it going with a tune off of my first record. I got a lot of requests for this one. It's called I Don't Mind, featured the one and only huge group. If you like what you hear, click share, please. Come on, let's go. <laughs> some fun with y'all tonight thank you all for tuning in i got one more tune before we get to this incredible interview with the one and only blake aaron and i'm about one week late but i don't think y'all will mind um this is a tune it was originally done by earth wind and fire 
but it was done by Wayman Tisdale. And I know we were celebrating him uh, about eight, nine days ago. So I hope you all enjoy this one. This is a little continuation of my classics, Unplugged. I think you know what it is. Can't hide love, sing along.
out to Wayman. I'm such a huge fan, and we all miss him so much. And uh, and we miss Maurice as well. That was a that was a double header right there. Um, man, we're just getting started today. Now I want to tell you a little bit about this gentleman, Blake Aaron. He's working on his sixth album. He's had so many hits, and he's worked with so many incredible artists as well. Keiko Matsui. Um, the list goes on and on. So many. He just had a fantastic smash hit groovers and shakers which featured darren ron and we're working on a tune for his next record so i don't want to give it all away y'all are ready for the one and only blake aaron check it out all right what is up blake how are you doing man thanks for coming through oh my pleasure thanks for having me adam it's always oh, good man. to see you man you get new hair and Love you it. know well th this is what they call the quarantine hair man it's uh had good, a haircut. Man. <laughs> Show man, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fly with that man. Looks great. It's rock and roll, man. I'm trying to catch up to you with the, with the, uh, with the length, you know. But back in the day, I had it. But mine doesn't go down; it goes out. It's a little bit different. So, you know, that can be a cool look too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, really appreciate you taking the time to come through, and of can't wait to hear you play. But before we do that, it's been become kind of a tradition to get to know uh, some of the guests on this show. And uh, we'd love to hear about how you got started in the industry. I know you're from SoCal. I'm very yeah. jealous because I had to move here to pursue my dreams. You were born here, raised. So uh, yeah, just give us a little backstory about, you know, growing up in SoCal and then, you know, just diving into the industry. Um, let's see, yeah, uh, just, I got into music pretty much right from when I was in, uh, in high school. You know, I was kind of always did it when I was a kid, but I didn't get serious about it until uh, I was, uh, you know, like a, a freshman in, in high school. And, uh, you know, you could probably guess I started out as a rock and roller. Uh, yeah. But real, real soon after that, uh, you know, I just got into the into the jazz band in high school. And I was doing a lot of rock and jazz at, at the same time. And then I started actually playing uh, in a college jazz band when I was still in high school. Oh. And uh, then I uh, went to Cal State Long Beach for a while. And then... Uh, you know, it just, one thing led to another, you know, I just, uh, I studied a lot of jazz, but then uh, before I even um, was able to, to graduate, I went on the road, probably, you know that feeling. I went on the road with a bunch of R&B bands, man. I went, you know, with, uh, wow. Uh, now these weren't the original versions of these bands, but the, the Drifters, the Coasters, Little Anthony and the Imperials, uh, Mary Wells, Joe Houston, uh, then, uh, man, shortly after that, uh, Dynasty and Lakeside, if you remember those guys. Oh, goodness. Wow. Um, and then the Gap Band after that. And, you know, yeah. just, you know, and it wasn't like I like totally planned. It was just, you know, how it is. You, you, you meet certain people and, you know, you just end up getting into that, that style. And I just love playing all the funk and R&B. And then... Yeah. Shortly after that um, was when I kind of started getting back into the rock and roll phase and being in rock bands and playing on the Sunset Strip and the whole thing with the, um, and uh, that was a blast. And then I did uh, studio work for a long time. Uh, I did a, a TV show called uh, Mad TV. I don't know if you remember that show on Fox. Yeah, I was, you beat me to it. I was going to ask about it because, um, you know, that is pretty cool. What was that experience like? I was mean, I did it for 15 years. It was really, it was really wow. cool. Uh, it was amazing. We we came up with a lot of uh, real cool concepts for that musically. Um, it, it was a lot of fun too because uh, I don't know if you remember the concept of Mad TV, but yeah, it would just make fun of everybody. So yeah. a lot of it was musical parodies. We'd make fun of you know, you name it. I mean, we'd make fun of U2 or Michael Jackson or you know whatever. You know, Whitney sure. Houston, who ever at the time. Um, you know, we, when they were still with us, uh, that we were just making fun of. And the cool thing is, is, you know, the parodies are fun. I mean, it's kind of like Weird Al Yankovic where you want to stay true to the music, but at the same time you have fun with it. So, uh, yeah. that was a blast. Well, you know what, I, what I'm noticing is a trend here is first of all, you mentioned a lot of different genres you've been into R and B rock jazz. And then as we transition to talk about your solo career you've actually incorporated that a lot which i think is really cool obviously you've got a great jazz guitar sound but you know we'll see you grab your strat or play some nylon string um you know talk a little bit about that about you know just kind of spreading the wealth with your uh, with your solo material 
Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. I think, you know, you and I were talking before about it can be kind of a both a blessing and a curse at the same time. Uh, I've always been, always, I always knew I wanted to be a musician, but other than that, I was kind of all over the map. You know, I kind of bounced around because, you know, everything I got into was like, this is really cool. And then it would be the next thing. Oh, this is really cool. So yeah. I was, you know, always into so many different styles of music, kind of like you, you know, there's either good music or, or bad music, you know, there's, there's, so uh, it's, it's been something that's hard not to, you know, not to get into. So when I play live, you know, I always have at least two guitars with me, sometimes three. Like when I do local gigs, I'll have three. I'll have a guitar up on a playing stand, you know, like the Thingy used oh, to yeah, do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, because I just love having all those voices, you know? Yeah. And it's, I kind of, a little bit going against the grain because I've had some people say, man, you know, you got to have one voice, man. You got to have one. And I probably have a principal voice, yeah. but, you know, kind of like at Matheny's, one of my, my big influences yeah, i've always seen him have at least two voices and um i there's just stuff that i can do on the strat that i can't do on the hollow body and vice versa you know it's just you know how it is when you're playing on stage i love the sound of that that west montgomery octaves on a clean hollow body there's nothing like it but then you can't scream on a on a hollow body you know like you can with the <laughs> A little distortion on the strat and, and uh, yeah. I just have all these sides of me that I feel like I need to express and speaking of wailing on the guitar I had the pleasure of hearing you play this tune all the way over in Europe and uh, we connected got to hang out over in Portugal that's at the, right uh, at the festival and uh, it was the opening night jam session and uh, you know you were fashionably late, not trying to call you out, just like a rock star. You came in right at the end. <laughs> well, my plane. And... In my defense, my plane uh, came in a little late. <laughs> but thanks to Adam Holly, though, what Adam is not telling you guys is it's only because of this man right here <laughs> that I was able to even play that night. Because we literally, sorry to interrupt you, uh, but we yep. uh, <laughs> we got my wife and I got to our room. We literally set our bags down. Yeah. And uh, then the room phone rings and they said, uh, are you coming to dinner? And we said, dinner? What, what dinner? Oh, there's a welcome yeah. dinner. It's already going on. We're going to send a car for you. Come outside. Wow. Okay. We didn't even have a chance to do anything. We, we just set our bags down. We went out to the car and they didn't ask me to bring my guitar. And I just thought it was a dinner. And right. so I come down and, you know, there's this whole band playing. Adam's jamming as we, uh, uh, as we come in to eat dinner. And uh, so we sit down and then uh, Christian, the, the gentleman who runs the whole thing, yeah. said, you're gonna play guitar, right? And I said, oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't bring it. I didn't know. And yeah. he said, I can take the car back, but you know, my room's just, <laughs> way, it's hugely spread out on this, uh, yeah. uh, you know, on, this, on these grounds. So I said, we'd have to take the car back. And um, they said, no, 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 why don't you just uh, talk to Adam? I said, oh, cool. So I went and, I actually played Europa on your guitar. Yeah. Thank you so much. And it was a great guitar. And, and Adam was just such, so kind and generous to, oh, you man. know. It's, it's, a, it's an honor to have you play the guitar. And by the way, you just slayed that song. And the reason why I bring it up, number one, you're nice enough to uh, play it for us here in a few minutes on the show. But number two, it's such a, to me, a challenge and, and a bit intimidating, I will say, to take such an iconic song. First of all, Santana, yeah. iconic version. Um, Gato too. Yeah. Gato, thank you. Uh, also, so but you managed to make it your own. I mean, just speak to that a little bit because you certainly did your own thing with that song, and it's incredible. Oh, thank you. You know, I my thought was to kind of do the best of both worlds between Santana and Gato, and then also add a little bit more of a, a jazz element to it, add some mm -hmm. chord changes. Uh, I actually collaborated with uh, Mike Whitaker. I don't know if you know who he is. Oh, He's, yeah, of course. Yeah, great, great uh, keyboard player. Um, he actually produced a long time ago my first two records. Wow, uh, okay. With Every Touch and Bringing It Back were Mike Whitaker productions, and we worked together a lot until he moved to Nashville. Yeah. But um, I just thought he would be great on helping me rearrange this song. And so we sat down together and uh, 
and came up with this. And I, I liked the, um, I liked the tempo and the passion of Gato's version. Santana's version is actually pretty fast. Yeah, it is. Uh, and it doesn't. To me, it, I love it. Don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have quite the passion that I was looking for, like Gato's had. Mm. But of course, you know the keys that Santana had, and the and the voice and the guitar, and of course he wrote the song. I mean, you have to show respect to that side of it as well. So we kind of took the two, and then uh, Mike and I looked at each other and said, you know, as much as we love the song, what could we do to add some like some chord changes? You know, instead of like the same eight bar pattern. So we added some chord changes and uh, put some strings in there and. And uh, and here we have it, you know. Man, well, it is incredible. And ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat right now for you live. Blake Aaron with Europa.
Man, Blake, like I said, it's a legendary song, but you managed to just put a whole new thing on it, man. Amazing, amazing. Oh, thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. Trying to keep up with you. Oh, no, man. <laughs> well, no, it's me that needs to keep up with you because you're currently working on your sixth album. Really yeah. incredible, man. And uh, But tell us a little bit just in general about this album. When is it coming out? Do we have a name? What is the theme? Because the people want to know what can they look for coming up next? Absolutely, yeah. It's called Color and Passion. And uh, I've been working on it for a long time. Uh, my radio promoter would say way too long. <laughs> uh, but you know how it is when you're, because uh, Adam is also a, uh, a wonderful uh, a producer. And when you start producing other people's projects, it's like your own project gets always put on the back yeah. burner yeah. so uh i've been doing these singles for a long time and uh my radio promoter is also named adam uh yeah. does uh you know you've got to finish the record man yeah. put it out as a record so we're finally doing it um so it's gonna have a lot of new tunes that people have not heard but then some that they have because they've been released as singles but then these will be the album versions of those singles uh, released on that and uh, like I, like we were talking earlier it has a lot of different stuff on it principally of course the jazz with hollow body like a lot of the singles that people have been hearing which is influenced by you know jazz and funk i would say that's those are two my two main influences in, in r&b but there's a there's a reggae actually a couple of reggae tunes on there there's um Another ballad that I wrote uh, recently that I had the opportunity to play for you is yeah. the title track called Color and Passion. Okay. And, uh, you know, that one's probably not going to be a single. It's one of the deep album cuts. It's almost real long, uh, like seven, eight minute tunes. But it's, it's one of the songs that really gave me a chance to um, express a whole other side of me because I love playing don't get a chance to do it very much, but I love playing guitar synth, uh, where the guitar is you know, really uh, very much like you know Matheny used to do. Uh, you know, I just do it. I used to do it more than I do now, but once in a while, I love to bring that out. So it's a ballad that I'm really proud of because it starts out with the nylon guitar, so two different voices that people don't hear from me all the time. So it starts out with just very, very. Um, sensitive with a nylon guitar and then it just goes from floor to ceiling with the guitar synth and you know, Tony Moore's on drums and uh, yep. St. Jeffrey's on bass and uh, and then I had a friend of mine by the name of Craig Charmat do all the string arrangements so it's a lot even some live strings on there as well uh, so we've got all kinds of stuff on uh, on this record uh, definitely hear some some rock influences it's hard for me to do a record without you know hearing little glimmers of uh, rock influences on there. D again, R and B, funk, jazz, uh, a lot of the hollow body that people are uh, used to hearing from me. And of course, we got one tune that uh, I was able to write with uh, Adam Holly together. Oh, it is my honor, man! What a fun tune. <laughs> oh, that's that was great. Yeah. And uh, you know, hopefully, it'll be the next single that we go for. And uh, We've got a lot of great players on there. Eric Valentine is playing on there. Yes, Mel sir. Brown is on there. Yeah. Adam yeah. Hawley is. I was telling Adam, sorry, I'm totally dumb, maybe it's, but no, I was no. telling Adam that, um, it, you know, I usually do all of my, my own rhythm guitar. Just, yeah. hey, I'm a guitar player. I've done a lot of rhythm. I, I can do it. Why not? But Adam laid this, this funky, funky rhythm guitar. And uh. I was thinking, <laughs> I can't. I can't improve on that. I can't improve on that. I'm so I'm just uh, so I'm proud to have uh, you know Adam's guitar playing on it, his composition skills, his production skills. Oh, so we got to do more in the future. Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, it's been a joy working with you, man. And um, every single idea you send back, it's just like bam, great melody, bam, great solo. And so the feeling is mutual. It's been a blast and, and a true collaboration. And uh, so. The honor is all mine, man. Really incredible. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, definitely look for that tune coming soon. Sunday Strut. Sunday Strut. And uh, yep. last thing, let the people know where they can find you online. And if you have anything coming up, I think you got a show coming up in Spagatini. But don't let me speak for you. What's coming up next for Blake Aaron and where can we find you? Uh, BlakeAaron.com. Two A's and Aaron, one R. That's what some people get that. 
uh, and it's Blake Aaron, not Aaron Blake. Sometimes that gets reversed as well. So A-A-R-O-N, just like Hank Aaron. Uh, BlakeAaron.com, and uh, uh, that's that's the principal way. But I'm also a Blake Aaron um, artist, I believe, uh, on Facebook. Uh, Blake Aaron Music on, excuse me, Twitter. Uh, Blake Aaron Music on Instagram. Well, I think we even have a TikTok account now. So uh, we're we're uh, all over the place. Right. You can uh, find us. Uh, let's see. And then um, Spagatini, August 8th, will be the CD release party here in California. Adam Hawley's going to be there. Oh, man. <laughs> Looking forward to it, man. I, I, well, I know about two of the songs already. The one we're doing and uh, the title cut are incredible. So I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and uh, that's going to be a blast. And, you know, as you know, a lot of uh, the gigs that we had scheduled for this year, unfortunately, were canceled from the coronavirus. But we do have a few uh, that are left. Um, I am playing uh, with um, a band called Soul Patrol with Larry Brax yeah. and uh, with Tom Braxton. Larry Brax is a great singer from Tower of Power. And uh, Tom Braxton is a wonderful saxophone player. So it's kind of a, a trio package. Uh, we'll play our own songs, but we play together as well. That will also be at Spagatini's on September 20th. So August 8th, Blake Aaron CD release party, September 20th uh, with Soul Patrol. Uh, I'll be doing another CD release party for my friends in Florida uh, coming up in September. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the, let's see, the one that Christian does uh, in Spain, Mallorca, Spain, oh, will yeah. be in October. Uh, that's been rescheduled. Uh, I'll also be in Texas in December. So I do have a few left that Fortunately, we're not canceled this year, uh, and those will all be on the website. Awesome, awesome. Well, you heard it from him, BlakeAaron.com. Thank you so much, Blake, for taking the time to come through. Really appreciate you, man. Oh, man, thank you so much for having me, Adam. It's been a pleasure. All right, man, catch you later. Take care. Oh, and there you have it. Wasn't that incredible? The one and only Blake Aaron. And that rendition of Europa, my goodness, wasn't that unbelievable? That boy could play! <laughs> Man, and you know, we talked about it in the interview. It's such an iconic song. But man, Blake, you really did your thing. Thank you so much for coming through. And I was reading the comments during that, and it looks like y'all were digging it too. By the way, real quick, I just want to give a huge shout out to all the supporters out there. And um, as you know, every week, I love to drop in um, our supporters in the credits. So you'll see your name there at the end of the episode. If you want to help out today, if you're enjoying what you're seeing, it's very easy. You can just click on the links. They're uh, in the description of this post. We're at PayPal, Cash App, Venmo. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all your support. We could not be doing what we're doing right now. I mean, if you go back and look at episode one, uh, it's a huge difference. And now today we're debuting our DSLRs. Speaking of which, it's time for the cat cam. And she's coming to you in high definition. Check it out. There she Hi. is. I'm just gonna adjust to send you up, center you up there oh, a little okay. bit. There we Thank are. Thank you. What's up, Kat? How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. It's always good to see you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if you have any questions for um, for Ask Adam, we got that segment coming up in a little bit. Uh, drop those in the comments. Kat has been uh, looking at those. Yes. But um, first of all, Kat, uh, what's going on? What are the people talking about out there? Well, we have um, some of our friends actually watching. We have Daniel Chia watching from Singapore. Hi, what's Daniel, up, Daniel and Miss Lou. Daniel has incredible guests. I think I just saw Dave Cos is going to be on his show, so make sure you check it out. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic show. And Daniel says cameras look really good. Oh, thank you, Daniel. All right. Hey, we're <laughs> trying to be like you. Daniel was real quick on it. <laughs> By the way, huge thanks to several people who've been very helpful in getting us uh, going with the um, technology. Big thanks to Daniel. Big thanks to Cecil Ramirez. I see him in the house. Big thanks to Jeff Ryan and also Brian Colbert. And I've been on the phone with all those guys. We've been swapping info uh, lately i've been trying to catch up with to them so uh i think we're getting there yeah. the cameras are looking good today so uh we okay. have helen and al taylor in connecticut watching okay. oh, hi what's guys up? all right <laughs> appreciate you guys brass city jazz festival uh i think as 
pretty much everything is postponed, but make sure you check it out next year. Waterbury, Connecticut, 2021. Yes. And then, of course, everyone saw Marcus Anderson pop up in the that's chat. That's right. That's right. He said something about it looks like uh, it looks like I smell good, so he needs to take a shower. So I, <laughs> He says, I look like I smell like Irish Spring. So right. what do you think? Do I, look, do I smell like Irish Spring? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no Irish uh, Springs. We are... Um, I guess what you would call like a clean family. Okay. So we, you know, use products that don't have a lot of like perfumes That's and true. chemicals. So That's true. Natural no products. Irish spring. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, and then we have uh, Elon Trotman. I saw him up, in the Elon? chat. Hi, yeah. Elon. He had a great, great show today. I caught a little bit of it. Um, and they were doing a tribute to uh, Grover and they had everybody like every saxophone player on earth was on that <laughs> show so congrats elon really loved it and uh, i'm gonna have to throw in a grover two next week so uh, uh really awesome awesome chris godbert was in there all right what's up chris? Uh, talking to the people yeah. and then radio 48.com smooth jazz okay. radio yeah they said love the new cameras as well oh appreciate it thank yeah. you a lot of people commented on the cameras uh chuck campbell yeah. he says production looks great all right, all vaughn right. and lynn <laughs> hi guys how hey, you doing what's up they said the new cameras are giving awesome video quality oh, Vaughn is an awesome saxophonist we're working on a couple tunes right now and make sure you look for those they're turning out really cool and just you know a few people that we always see Marilyn and Rick down yeah, in San right. Diego What's hi guys. Appreciate you guys we all miss right. you guys so much we really do John and Betsy Meyer in Florida watching hi guys right. how are you thanks for tuning in and thank you for staying up late <laughs> that's right you East Coasters we appreciate you we start at 10 p.m. and then uh, you know it, uh, it just keeps on going but uh, we appreciate y'all <laughs> Sunny Fink she's watching from Colorado she says you're sounding terrific oh wow thank you oh man okay all right. I'll send you Check. <laughs> Check it and in the mail. <laughs> Michelle Sellers watching from St. Louis. Okay. A Paula Patrice Seabrook. She says hi from Atlanta. Okay. What's up? ATL in the house. Yes. <laughs> and then Eric Christian. We see Eric all the time yeah. at Brian Colbertson's Napa. Yeah, Napa Valley. And Jazz um, getaway. <laughs> I don't know where you live. <laughs> are you in uh, California, the West Coast? Are you yeah, East drop Coast? It, drop it drop in, in where you're calling. <laughs> oh, and here's something for Eric. Adam and I were on our way to New York one time because actually we were on our way to the um, festival in Connecticut, Al right. Taylor's. And I feel like I saw you. Um, a few seats ahead of us. We okay. were in first class, but you were like in the first seat of first ah. class. <laughs> and by the I, way, <laughs> when we're when we we're in business class, we, it means we got upgraded. We, right. We're not buying those tickets, but uh, <laughs> but since we fly so much, uh, well, we used to. We haven't flown in a while. I know, now, but uh, we, we would get upgraded. Yeah, we get often. upgraded. So but anyways, I feel like it was you, but we didn't say anything because I think it was like super early and everyone was going to sleep, and I was like. I feel like I know that guy. <laughs> but just drop in where you're watching from because I have no idea and yeah. I always see you popping in watching. Um, a lot of people have comments about your hair. Oh, what are they saying? <laughs> Is anything good? Anything yes, good? <laughs> all good. They're saying they're loving the curls. See, so I think the, ju you know, I think the jury is in. Yes. The jury is out. Diane uh, Barnes, she says, love the curls. All right. uh, she well, calls it the COVID do, the curly COVID do. If you weren't watching like three weeks ago, Kat uh, was threatening to take the uh, the <laughs> razor to me. So I I said, let's check with the people. And so now it's kind of a common theme. Every week everyone's yes. like, the, you know, commenting. No one has said chop it off. So you're, uh, uh, it's not working out for you. <laughs> I guess. We'll give it a few more weeks and see how long because I don't okay. know. <laughs> Um, let me see. Linda Dickinson. She says another cool shirt. Oh, thank you. You know, trying. Uh, uh, Where did you get that shirt from, anyway? You know, got Is this at the mall. I mean, I don't want to tell everybody. I mean, <laughs> every, everyone, everyone's gonna done have the shirt. You know what I'm gonna do to some? You know, when you go to somebody, you say, oh, "I love that shirt. Where'd you get it?" Oh man, they don't make this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so since we're on Facebook Live for the world. Yeah, they, you can't get this. Can't get this. <laughs> no, this, this is, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I think it is. I think it is Macy's. I think it is Macy's. I think so, too. Um, let me see. Oh, and then with your, your interview with yeah. uh, Blake Aaron, I can't talk today. <laughs> Everyone loved the interview. Yeah, People Blake is awesome. People were saying they uh, love the backstories. Yeah. Especially with Blake. You know, I learned a lot. I knew he was he was just a bad man and an incredible player, but I learned a lot interviewing him. I mean, he's just played with everybody and uh, and then just incredible artists as well. As we mentioned, his yeah. sixth album is coming out soon. 
and I had the distinct honor of, uh, well, have. We're still working on the tune. I'm producing a tune on it, and it's turning out really cool. And what else? They, oh my goodness, I think probably like 30 people commented on uh, Europa. Okay, yeah, well, it was, <laughs> it was, it was pretty awesome. We was had awesome. Uh, guitar emojis, flame emojis for like fire <laughs> yeah. on fire. Everyone was saying woo, people were saying wow, just incredible. It was, it was great. I don't think I've ever, yeah, I think I've seen Blake play once yeah. in um Yeah, when Spain. we were in, yeah, or no, we were in uh, Portugal. Portugal, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that that rendition was just amazing. But yeah. you've got a lot of great comments, Blake. People are <laughs> loving you, and they can't wait for your new album. Yeah, it's coming and soon. And we coming actually soon. have a comment for Blake, Leonly. Hi, Leon. Hey, what's and up? And Willie, how you guys oh, doing? Right. How y'all doing? She says Blake is a phenomenal artist. I love his music. Yeah, no, he he was really great. He was really great. After your interview, Sean Davis says the doctor has done it again. Ah, you're too kind. <laughs> and by the way, I want to wish all the fathers out there a fantastic Father's Day. I hope you had a fantastic Father's Day yesterday. And uh, I know we did because I have some proof, and I want to share it with you guys. My lovely wife over here really put her foot in this whole celebration, <laughs> and I just felt so special, so honored. I want to throw up. Uh, I mean, we were we went through so many picks last week. I just got a few for you, but um, just a few. we had a lot of fun. Check this out. So here's number one pick. We went outside, and she had a Bloody Mary station set up. And I was like, what in the world? This looks like a restaurant. It was just incredible. Incredible. Well, you know me. I got to do it up. And Adam loves the, Bloody Mary. Here's the final product. Look at that. And I took that picture with the uh, with the new camera too, so I'm, I'm I'm learning a little bit. I'm getting there. I got a lot. I got a ways to go. Now for the main course, we had so many items. We had um, we had uh, a bunch of different types of sausage. We had vegetables. But the highlight was a dish that we had in Switzerland, and it's called rocklet. And so what happens is that you. Uh, you know, you kind of melt the cheese, and it's got like a little receptacle you put it in. You put a slice of cheese, you melt it, and then check this out. You put it over some potatoes. You can see it's good, because I was already eating here. <laughs> but uh, man, it was incredible. And this dish is from Switzerland, and our good friend Greg Manning introduced us to it. Um, we had dinner at his place back in October of last year. His family's place. Yeah, his family's place, and it was just incredible. So last pick, this was one of the gifts that uh, Kat and uh, our son Adam Jr. got us. Check this out. They got, this is a little graphic. They made us look like Marvel characters, and uh, I'm honored to be Iron Man. And uh, little Adam is uh, Thor. Our dog Rufus is uh, is Groot, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. And I love I love your outfit. Now you're you're one of the uh, thank you characters. one of the female warriors from Black Panther. That's right, from Black Panther. So, so I am the protector of Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you saw it right here, ladies and gentlemen. We are now officially officially superheroes. So pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, it's that time for Ask Adam. Okay, so, so I'm scrolling through my phone right now. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> um, there's like a thousand comments. Okay. Oh, someone asked. I'm so sorry. I didn't grab your name okay. because I was scrolling super fast. Someone asked, do you ever play acoustic guitar live? You know, I haven't done it a lot live. It's so challenging, um, you know, traveling with an instrument. And it's hard enough to get one guitar on the airplane, <laughs> let alone a few. So, yeah, typically uh, touring, I just use, um, you know, this, this guitar right here, this PRS. And uh, one cool thing about this guitar, you can make it sound a little bit like an acoustic. It's got that feature. Um, if I'm on a tour where they're going to uh, transport the gear, then, I mean, all bets are off. You know, I've, I've been on tours. I mean, gosh, when I was with Jennifer Lopez, I think I had like eight guitars and a bunch yeah. of amps and pedals. So it kind of just depends on um, the workflow. Um, but typically, if uh, if it's just me dragging the, <laughs> the guitar around the world, <laughs> I just bring this one right here, this hollow body too. Yeah. And yeah. actually, you have... I don't know. Do you use that case anymore? It's a double case where you have two guitars. Yeah, you know, I had a double case where I could carry two guitars on the airplane. To answer your question, no, I don't use it because it's heavy. <laughs> and I used to use that back when I when I was much younger man. I, would, I think when I was around 22 and on tour with uh, the Manhattan Transfer, and I dragged two guitars through Europe. Yeah. And I told myself I'll never do that again. And it was heavy. 
<laughs> it was heavy. It was heavy. Yeah. But now traveling through Europe, you only use this case when you're in Europe is the hard case with the oh, rollers. Oh, yeah, I've got a case where it's pretty cool. You, you you take your guitar in your gig bag, the soft case, but then put it in a hard case and you can uh, check it under the plane. So that, that comes in really handy for sure. Yeah. Okay, so Janet Rollins. Hi, Janet. All right, what's up, Janet? She asked, who are your musical influences? Oh, gosh, there's so many. But for what we're doing here, contemporary jazz, number one, George Benson, huge fan. I heard him uh, for the first time when I was 15 or 16. I heard um, Breezin, uh, the uh, the drummer in my band in high school, um, Jake, made a mixtape for me, and Breezin was on there, and that changed my life. Um, and then I went on to check out, you know, all the other greats, Norma Brown, and all the great saxophonists, Kirk Whalum, Gerald Albright. So um, all of those are huge influences for me. Of course, I play a lot of other styles, too. So um, one name I'll give you for more kind of a uh, blues sound I love Robin Ford big fan of him so um, so I got I got a few influ influences but it's got to start with the uh, George and uh, and West Montgomery too if we're talking about jazz yes we also had a another question okay how long will the AH live run and that's uh, from Leon Lee yeah well Leon we're gonna be here for a little while because uh, well, fortunately, we'll be here for a while. Unfortunately, you know, the shows just keep getting pushed to um, 2021. So we're having so much fun. We feel the love from you guys. We we really appreciate the support. And uh, so we're going to keep keep it going indefinitely. Um, it's just been just really incredible. So uh, there, there's no end date right now. We're going to keep the party going. So make sure you tune in every Monday. No uh, Nancy Stack. Hi, Nancy. Thank up, you Nancy? so much for your All question. Right. She says, Adam, what's your advice to aspiring musicians? I would say... Um, number one, just do your best every time. It doesn't matter if the gig pays $50, $500, $5,000. Um, I can tell you so many times where like little gigs that were like, ah, this is not a big deal. But I met somebody and that led to big things. So just, just bring 110% every time. And then um, a lot of people are like, oh, it's who you know. It is who you know. But you can make your own luck. And so putting yourself in good situations, being around people that are doing what you want to do, and then bringing that 110%, good things will happen, definitely. So, so those are my definitely. main pieces of, 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 of advice. Thank you so much for your question. Yeah. Stephanie Valentine, she says, do you ever do guitar clinics? Oh, yeah. 100%. I do a ton of clinics. Um, I, I have some full-time gigs. I, I teach at um, a couple colleges in uh, the Los Angeles area. But I also have done clinics throughout the world, you know, Italy, um, uh, all over the U.S., uh, Singapore. Um, so definitely, hey, if you're looking for a clinic, let's make it happen. Yeah. Because <laughs> I just have so much love for teaching. Um, I had got my big break from one of my teachers at USC. That's how I started touring. Pat Kelly recommended me for the Manhattan Transfer. So I absolutely know the value of education and um love paying it forward so uh so yeah i'm available <laughs> <laughs> um and then from Rhonda kilpatrick What's she's Rhonda? down here in socal in yeah. san diego hi <laughs> she asks let me see hold on i lost it okay but I, here we go do you like playing for the jazz community or pop is that a trick question <laughs> <laughs> well I, I think you can tell jazz is, is my first love and, the, and that's what um you know the style that i make my records in but um i love all music i, I don't i think there's just good music and, and bad music in the sense that um if if people are communicating playing together and really putting their heart and soul the genre kind of doesn't matter. I've just had so much fun in so many different situations, whether it be pop or R&B or gospel. Um, but yeah, j jazz is my first love. I, I think you could tell from uh, <laughs> I put out I put out three jazz records, so uh, you know I'm having fun with that. So okay, and think, we have I think we've got time for one more. One what more. Got? Yeah. Ooh, that's a hard one. Okay. Can you just do two more? Okay, two more. <laughs> All right, hey, happy wife, happy life. So, That's right. Uh, otherwise, I'll hear about it at the end of the episode. Oh, my so. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michelle Sellers says, what's your favorite venue? And then LaRonda Ooh. Garrett says, do you ever play in church band? So favorite venue, gosh, that's hard to say. I, I love all of them for different reasons. I mean, the, the, the big venues obviously are fun. You got a bunch of people in there ready to party. 
but the clubs are great too. Uh, they're so intimate, and you got the people right there on top of you, and they're yelling at you, making requests <laughs> and stuff. And I love it. I love all of it. Um, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, but uh, definitely it was a dream come true to do the Hollywood Bowl, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, it's a big outdoor amphitheater in Hollywood and uh, seats, I think, 16,000 people or something. So um, did that uh, last August, mm -hmm. and uh, that was pretty incredible. So um, yeah. And then do I play in church? I do. We're off right now because, um, you know, just with the pandemic and everything. But I've been at First Church of God Center of Hope in Inglewood, California. Inglewood up to no good. Up to no good. But uh, I've been there <laughs> since 2013 and love it. And uh, it's just so much fun. And our worship leader, Kurt Likes, he used to tour with, uh, and still does from time to time, with Jonathan Butler. So it's all in the family. It's it's all one big musical world. And uh, so, uh, so yes, love playing in church. That's how we met. We met in church. Yes, And I was in the did. church band. That was at uh, New Beginning. Out we West were Covina. just talking about that, yeah. weren't we, at the... At the on the anniversary exactly, show. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, give Kat a hand. Thank you, Kat, so much You're for welcome. helping out. Of course. Thank Stopping you guys so through. much for tuning in <laughs> and asking all of your questions and then of course giving us your feedback. Yeah. No, it's been great. We'll appreciate you, Kat. We will bye. see you next week. And by the way, for next week. <laughs> <laughs> we have the one and only Phil. Denny in the house, incredible saxophonist by way of Lansing, Michigan, and he's had so many great albums, um, so many really big singles on the charts and on radio, and I've had the good fortune of working with him as well. I produced a couple tunes on his last album. We're working on three for his next album, so we're going to have so much to talk about, so much music for you guys, so tune in for Phil Denny next week, and, uh, and that's going to wrap up the month of June. What an incredible month. Jasmine Gent, Michael LinkedIn. We had the anniversary episode, Today Blake Aaron, and then Phil Denny. And uh, by the way, I'm going to have a new schedule to release for you guys for July. And it is jam-packed with your favorites, with legends. And we've got a variety. We've got a, a guitar player that you know. We've got a vocalist that you know. Um, we've got a saxophonist that you know we have a bassist so we're, we're going all around the world of instruments and you're going to know these names they're incredible and so stay tuned for that next week I'm going to debut our July schedule and we're going to have fun with Phil Denny so before we get out of here I'm going to do a little bit more music for you is that alright? We're gonna keep it going. Put your hands right here, y'all. This is the tune off my second record. It featured Darren Ron on the original. It's called Shuffle. Come on, y'all. Let's have some fun.
y'all. We got time for one more. I'm gonna take you out with a party. Come on, y'all. Put it right here. This is a tune called Just a Friend. It's your last chance to dance, y'all. Let's go. Includes another episode of A H Live. This was episode 12. It featured the one and only Blake Aaron. And next week we've got the incredible Phil Denny coming in all the way from Lansing, Michigan. If you want to help out the show one more time, it's not required, but it's much appreciated. PayPal, Cash App, Venmo. Thank you, thank you so much for the support out there. Really can't wait to see you next week. Episode 13, Phil Denny. See you there.